One of my absolute favorite cocktails I shared in the recent 50 video, completely free essential cocktails course, was called an Enzoni. And the Enzoni is essentially a gin sour with flavor accents of grapes and Campari. And I think a lot of you were surprised by how much you really enjoyed this drink, just like I was. This got me thinking that the Enzoni would actually be a perfect base for us to experiment with on the channel. And today we're gonna to do that by making a coffee Enzoni. And this is gonna bring really nice kind of depth to the drink and richness, whereas before it was a little bit more fresh and vibrant, we're gonna really lean into those kind of darker, richer flavors, which can be really delicious. This drink's really easy to make, and it's actually a perfect introduction to both bittersweet cocktails and coffee cocktails. So without further ado, let's make a coffee Enzoni. All right, so if you wanna learn more about the classic Enzoni and the full recipe from my Essential Cocktails course, I'll link the video just above for you to watch first. But what we're doing today is kind of transforming the flavor profile into something very different, despite using some common ingredients. So, whereas we started with green grapes in the classic Enzoni, we're gonna be using black grapes, ideally sable grapes, but you can use red grapes, you can use black grapes, whichever you prefer. We're gonna be using Algebra Coffee Liqueur, who are kindly sponsoring this video, which I'll talk about in a minute. You're gonna need some gin, Campari, lemon juice, and then if you want to add a little bit more sweetness to the drink, you can use a sugar syrup, and I'm gonna use light Muscovado sugar. And then finally, a little bit of saline solution, just to bring the whole drink together, which I'll talk about in a second as well. So because we want the drink to be nice and airy and have a really nice kind of vibrant texture, we're gonna be shaking the drink, and the first thing you wanna do is add around about six to eight of your grapes into your shaker tin, which we're gonna muddle into our coffee liqueur. So when it comes to the grapes, I'm using sable grapes, which have a really nice kind of whiny note, kind of tannic, a little bit crisp and kind of bitey, but you could use red grapes, which would be a little bit sweeter. Obviously green grapes are classic, but they're gonna be a little bit too sweet for the drink and probably be overpowered by the bigger flavors that we've got going in there. To this, I'm gonna add 20 mils of Algebra coffee liqueur. And I first discovered Algebra in 2022 when I tasted 20 coffee liqueurs in one night, which was a long night. And it was very mixed, had some really fantastic coffee liqueurs, including Algebra, some that were not so good, which I really probably wouldn't drink again. But Algebra actually turned out to be the winner of that. And I'm really proud to be working with them today as the sponsor of this video. So the really nice thing about Algebra is it only contains three ingredients, coffee, rum, and sugar. And they're all really high quality ingredients and they work really well together. So when it comes to the coffee, we've got Ozone Coffee in there, who you might have heard of. They buy great coffee, they roast it really well. And this is the kind of foundational flavor in the Algebra Coffee Liqueur, so a really good solid base. Second of all, we've got rum, which is the spirit base of the Algebra Coffee Liqueur. And this brings much more character than something like a neutral grain spirit or a vodka, which you'd find in other coffee liqueurs. And it just has really nice kind of character, which ties in well with the kind of chocolatey rich notes of the coffee. And then third of all, we've got sugar. And this is a really interesting point. So the Algebra Coffee Liqueur is what's known as an extra dry coffee liqueur. And what we mean by this is it contains the minimum amount of sugar to be legally classified as a coffee liqueur with just 100 grams of sugar per liter of coffee liqueur. So being an extra dry coffee liqueur or a lower sugar coffee liqueur has two key benefits. First of all, it means you can add algebra into lots of different cocktails without really throwing off the balance of the drinks. If you add other coffee liqueurs which have a much higher sugar content into a cocktail, you're gonna make the drink really sweet, really syrupy, which isn't what you want. You just wanna bring loads of coffee flavor like the algebra does without throwing off the balance too heavily. And then second of all, when it comes to a textural point of view, this is a much lighter coffee liqueur than those other coffee liqueurs with higher sugar, which can be quite syrupy and sticky and sweet. This is lighter, more like a vermouth or a fortified wine, making it great for mixing, but also great for sipping. So if you wanna try Algebra's amazing products, the extra dry coffee liqueur, also their single origin coffee liqueur and a decaf coffee liqueur, make sure you head over to their stand at London Coffee Festival, where you can try all three products and also this cocktail, so you can give it a go for yourself. So big thanks to Algebra for sponsoring this video, producing these amazing products. And now let's get these grapes crushed into the coffee liqueur. And the reason we're doing this is to get all the nice kind of flavors out of the pulp, also the skins into the coffee liqueur and the chocolate nutty notes of the coffee liqueur and those really rich dark grapes just complement each other perfectly. Bringing a completely new dynamic to our coffee Enzoni. Next up, we're gonna add 20 mils of good quality gin. And it's really important you choose something like a London dry gin, which has got plenty of big flavor in there, plenty of body, because something too delicate would be easily overpowered by these big flavors. So you want something that's gonna really cut through and bring those big juniper notes to the drink. I'm going with a London dry gin from Colworth Farm Distillery, which is gonna work really nicely. But you could also use something like a non-alcoholic spirit here, just to bring down the ABV and the intensity of the drink. Or you could even experiment with other spirits. I think something like a really nice funky aged rum would work well, which would bring something a little bit different to the drink and tied really nicely with the coffee liqueur. So to our grapes, 20 mil of coffee liqueur and 20 mil of gin. We're gonna go 20 mil again of Campari. And this is gonna be our key kind of bittersweet ingredient along with the coffee. 
So as I said before, this is a really good introductory drink to things like bittersweet cocktails. Campari is a big flavor. Some people love it, some people hate it. And if you think of something like a Negroni, it has a lot of Campari flavor in there and it can be quite overwhelming and overpowering for some people. Give this drink a try. It's got those sweet and sour elements with some bitterness, but not too much. And I think you'll really enjoy it. So if you try the drink and you still find it a little bit too bitter, something you could do is sub out the Campari, bring in Aperol, and this will bring down both the bitterness of the drink and also the ABV. We're gonna go 20 mils again of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And this is a really nice recipe because it's just 20, 20, 20, 20. So really easy to remember. And this is gonna bring some acidity to the drink, some kind of vibrancy. And using freshly squeezed citrus is something I don't always do in coffee cocktails, particularly if they have espresso in, but it combines really well with coffee liqueur because they're kind of complementary textures. Whereas lemon juice and espresso kind of are at odds with each other, so I don't often put them together. But in this drink, it works perfectly. Next up, I'm gonna add two ingredients which could kind of be seen as optional, but I think are gonna be really important for some people. So if you don't add any sugar, this is gonna be quite a dry drink, you're gonna have some of that bitterness coming through. But if you go maybe 10 mils of a light Muscovado sugar syrup, this is just gonna be nicely balanced, I think, for most people. And this is really easy to make. Just combine two parts of light Muscovado sugar with one part water, mix them together until it's fully dissolved, and it's gonna be a really nice sweetener for the drink. So a classic Enzoni uses white sugar, which would be fine in here, but again, it doesn't bring anything other than sweetness, whereas this brings kind of depth and character, and again, complements the coffee liqueur in the drink really well. And then the second, I guess, somewhat optional ingredient we're gonna to add to the drink is gonna be our saline solution, made with one part salt to five parts water, and we're gonna measure this out on scales. So this just does a really good job of, I think, suppressing the bitterness or the perceived bitterness of the drink bringing that acidity, sweetness, bitterness together. And if you don't add any, it's still a great drink. If you add one gram, it can be a little bit too salty, but 0.5 grams measured on scales, it's just gonna bridge everything really well together. So you're gonna pour the drink over lots of ice, give it a good shake, just to really mix the ingredients together, dilute and also chill the drink. I'm gonna fine strain the drink into a frozen glass with a really nice big ice cube in there. Gonna garnish with three of our nice sable grapes. And there we have the coffee Enzoni. Enjoy. So the coffee Enzoni everyone, cheers. It's a really nice balance of acidity, sweetness, bitterness, salt. So four of your kind of key taste groups in there. Got loads of coffee flavor coming through, which is really good quality coffee flavor. Using great coffee is obviously the foundation of a great coffee drink. Got the juniper from the gin, which is really nice. Bittersweet notes from the Campari. Sweet and sour, making it almost kind of like a gin sour in itself, but it's just richer, deeper, and those grape flavors just really complement everything and bring a kind of nice tannic flavor, almost like a whiny note to the drink, which I really, really enjoy. I think using the Muscovado sugar is a really good choice because it's almost got like a salted caramel character going on, which is completely different to an Enzoni, but also reminiscent because of the other ingredients in there. So if you want to level up your own cocktails and watch the full 50 video completely free course, I'll put it just here in a playlist for you to watch. And there's going to be lots more coffee and cocktail content for you just here. And once again, big shout out to Algebra for sponsoring this video. Amazing products, amazing people. Check them out at London Coffee Festival. Try this drink for yourself and I'll see you soon. Cheers.